Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful morning here in Chichester. We arrived last week, and last week we took care of cutting all of the pieces of trim for the interior of the boat, as well as making new doors for the companionway. This week we're going to be mounting a lot of that, but there should also be enough time for us to go out and explore a little bit. If you're new to our channel, my name is Mess, and this is my fiance Ava. I've spent the last five years doing a somewhat extensive refit on my 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That involved all kinds of fun stuff like building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, gutting most of the interior to make structural repairs, and then subsequently rebuilding most of the interior. I also rebuilt the entire deck and painted the top sides. All of that fun is documented in hundreds of videos here on YouTube. Before we left Gosport, we hadn't seen temperatures below freezing. Now here in Chichester, it's still not super cold. It's like minus two degrees Celsius or something like that. But it's enough that it's a nice crisp morning and frost is on everything and it's just really pretty. This is all of the trim we made last week at James's amazing workshop for Athena. If you want to see some really cool woodworking, you should check out JLA Joinery on Instagram or Facebook. That is James's company. But uh, yeah, this week we're going to be installing a bunch of this. We also have yet more trim to make at the workshop. But uh, why don't we jump in at the deep end of the pool and get started on the doors. Installing the doors shouldn't be all that bad. We've got four of these detachable hinges so we can remove the doors when we're not using them. The only terrifying part is getting everything lined up correctly because of course I don't want to end up with wonky doors. I've already trimmed the doors so that they're nice and flush with the trim in here. That's important because we'd like the doors to be able to open all the way. But yeah, let's uh, cross our fingers and get started. So far, so good. I've got one door on here now. Let's get the other one on there and see if we've got a somewhat uniform gap down the middle here. I've only put one screw in each of the hinges on the doors, figuring I could always use that to give me a little bit of adjustability before putting in the last screw. But let's see how this goes. That pretty much looks perfect to me. So let's go ahead and get the last screws in there. These are going to make it a lot easier for us to get in and out of the boat. But like I mentioned in the last video, they are only for when we're at anchor or in a marina. I still need to make a little strip of wood to go on the back of one of the doors to seal up this gap here. And because the hinges are rather thick, there's also a gap back here. We can fix that by either recessing the hinges a little bit, that'll take care of a lot of it, but we could also just use some weather stripping to seal this up. Also on the to-do list for the workshop is a new piece of this trim up here on the hatch. I think we can use the old one as a template, so let's see if we can remove it. There is one part of this that's gonna be very easy to remove, and that's these little ears here on both sides because they're just held in place by some adhesive. Yoink, and yoink. Inside of this piece of nice Iruko is hiding this piece of trim. The new one does need to be pretty thick to cover the doors, but uh, yeah, this seems more like a workshop job. It's a really nice sunny day. Why don't we take advantage of that by installing the trim along the top of the companionway? Ta-da! I still need to put the bungs in there, but it's already looking a heck of a lot better. I'm going to use a little bit of thickened epoxy to adhere those bungs in place. And while I've got some epoxy mixed up, I can go ahead and glue the last bit of knee trim here and also this little hatch for under the companionway. That little hatch goes right there. And of course the knee trim is going to go over here and cover up this knee where the chain plate attaches to the hull. We don't need much, about 50 grams should do it. Just a tiny dab of thickened epoxy on the bungs should be plenty. Gonna line the grain up so it matches and tabity tap 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 and just snip the top. 
Once the thickened epoxy has cured, I can give that a light sanding and it'll look like a million bucks. All the bungs are in and the companionway is looking spiffier by the minute. Now it's gonna get cold tonight, but if I just cover up the companionway with a couple of blankets, it should easily stay above five degrees Celsius in this area, which is what the epoxy needs to cure. Even though I'm using the fast hardener, because it is cold outside, I still have a lot of working time left. So let's get the last bits glued up. The thing the epoxy on the tiny hatch and the knee trim will of course need a little bit of time to cure. And while you're waiting for that, there's some more trim that I'd love to get started on here in the forward cabin while we still have access to James' amazing workshop. We need a bit of curved trim. That's gonna be a fun challenge to cover up this bit of plywood that's poking out up here. We also need some trim for both sides of the freezer area. So over here and over here. Last but in no way least, it would be nice to swap out this bit of plywood here at the mad station for some spiffy iruko. Let's head to the workshop. I started by machining the wood for the curved trim in the forward cabin. I used the jointer to establish two flat square sides. Next up is a stop at Mr. Thickness Planer to take the wood down to final thickness and width. James busted out a piece of laminated board and we secured little blocks of softwood to it to give us the needed curve. It's a rather soft curve with eight pieces of only 10 millimeters of thickness, so we shouldn't see a lot of spring back. We used foaming polyurethane adhesive with a bit of dishwashing liquid applied to the surface as a release agent. And then we got everything clamped down nice and tight. While the adhesive was doing its thing, I got started on the table leg. Nothing super fancy, just a simple miter joint, a biscuit and yet more foaming polyurethane adhesive. Removing the bent piece from the laminated board was a little bit of an adventure. Even with our makeshift release agent, we still had to bust out the oscillating multi-tool to finally get the piece to let go. After a quick stop at the jointer to clean up one of the sides, the trim started to look a lot better. Then it was on to the thickness planer to get it down to a final thickness, before moving on to the most terrifying step in the process, using the Finger Decapitator 2000 to remove most of the material from the center of the trim so it'll fit over the plywood. Here are the results of our last efforts at the workshop. I think the most impressive piece is this guy, the curved bit for above the V-berth. This is quite the beast. We also have trim for both sides of the freezer area, as well as a piece of trim for the aft edge of the companionway hatch. And of course, also the new Iruko leg for the mad station, plus another few bits and pieces. It's not raining today, so why don't we start with all of the companionway related items. With one last finishing touch, this is that tiny hatch from earlier. The bulk of the work to spiffy up the companionway is done. It looks amazing both from the inside and also from the outside. There are some finishing touches I'm not gonna be able to do this week. That is to sand all of this to make the bungs nice and flush. We also have a shoddy paint job over there I need to fix. And of course the hatch looks rather nasty. Also, when we get back to Gosport, there is a little barrel bolt and a lock waiting for us that I can install on the door. But yeah, I am thoroughly pleased with the result so far. 
Last week we made and hung the spice rack and I'm telling you, I love it. It's just like so pretty and it's so nice having the spices easy to get to and plus it's freed up a ton of space in the lockers. Last week I also mentioned about making a felt insert for all the spice bottles. When we were designing the rack, we were a little nervous about the bottles shaking and rattling when we were sailing. I knew we'd have to come up with something to stop the bottles from making noise, so... I came up with this little anti-rattling doohickey. I made this one the other day to test out to make sure it works and it's great. The bottles fit nice and snug. They slip in and out easily. And most importantly, they don't rattle around. I have this one done already. All that's left is to make another one for the other shelf. This is a pretty straightforward project. I just used one millimeter thick crafter's felt. Any thicker than that, then I wouldn't be able to fit all the spices back on the shelf. The first thing that I did was cut out two strips of felt that were five millimeter wide, the length is double the length of your shelf. And I chose five millimeters wide because I didn't want the felt to peak above this little ledge here. So once the strips are cut out, you're gonna put one end together and then just sew right across. Next, I'm gonna sew the pockets for the bottles. So you wanna take your felt and lay it nice and flat on the counter. Then take the bottle and sandwich it in between both pieces of felt. Make sure that the bottom one is nice and flat. Then wrap the top around the bottle. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then put a pin in the corner. And then you're going to sew up that seam right there. Here is the first pocket sewn together. The bottle fits really nice in there. So next I'm just going to trim the top piece of felt right there. Now bear with me through the next part. It might get a little bit confusing and there might be a more elegant way of making the pockets for the jars, but I found this to be the best way to get the most snug fit. And it's important to get a snug fit because I don't want the felt to be collapsing in on itself when I'm pulling the jars in and out. Next, what I do is put two jars together. I take the felt strip that I cut off and pin it to the front in between the two jars. Then I take this piece and I wrap it around to the back. I put a pin in it right there, make sure it's nice and snug. And then I sew down there and I sew down there. This is what you get after you sew that together. I'm just going to trim right here and right here. This is that front strip. That is the first two pockets sewn. The third is pinned and ready to go. And then you're just going to continue that all the way down until you have all the pockets you need. Now, it may be a little bit of a confusing way of sewing these pockets, and there might be a more elegant way of doing it, I'm not sure, but this just seems the best way to get the most snug fit around the bottles, and that's really important for the rack. One, so they fit, and two, so the felt doesn't collapse in on itself when I'm pulling the bottles in and out. And just like that, two felt inserts are done. All I have to do is trim off all the little threads and then test them out in the rack. They just pop in and out. Their little felt pockets stay so nice. Beautiful. It's been a busy week in the workshop and on the boat so far. So uh, we figured it'd be good to take a little break, enjoy the good weather and go for a walk. We are heading to a little town called Itchener and it's about two miles southwest of here. From a Dane's perspective, taking into account that Denmark has the tidal range of a dry sponge, one of the cool things about Chichester Marina is that it's behind its very own lock. The marina has over a thousand berths, but at least this time of year it feels like a much smaller, very cozy marina. Perhaps that's because it's almost entirely surrounded by farmland and trees. We have thoroughly enjoyed our time here in Chichester, and if you're ever in this neighborhood, it's well worth stopping by. The path we're walking down is called Saltern's Way Path and it's about 18 kilometers long and it runs from the center of Chichester all the way to the dunes in East Head. From the marina we cross a beautiful old lock to get on to the path. Fun fact, actually, this path is called Salt Turns Way because this area used to be huge in salt production. Actually, the area where the marina is is where they used to make all the salt.
So far we've learned that English dirt has a lot of clay in it, at least around here. This is the gold that the people want. Oh no, my socks are even muddy. This is the village of Itchener. It's one long, narrow road that goes down to the harbor. It's very traditional and quaint, but unfortunately, the one and only pub is closed. We made it to our final destination, Itchener Harbor. Last week when we brought Athena in, we came this way, and next week when we leave, we'll be going right back out that way. We just found out that there are 5,000 moorings here and when we were sailing Athena through, it definitely felt like that. And we're actually really happy that it was off season because we could imagine that there are tons of boats here during peak season and it's probably pretty hectic. It was great to get out and stretch our legs a little bit and get away from all of the woodworking. We also got to go into the town of Chichester, thanks to our friend Daryl. We didn't film that though, but our main objective for coming here was to make trim, and well, we certainly succeeded in that. This, plus the stuff I've already mounted, was everything on our list. It's going to take us quite a bit of time to get this mounted because a lot of this stuff is dependent on other projects. For instance, the bulk of the trim we've got here is dependent on us removing the headliner, which doesn't really make sense to do before we're ready to finish the headliner. So yeah, it's, it's gonna take a while, but at least now we've got all of the trim. I want to give a giant thank you to James for letting us borrow his amazing workshop and for helping me every single night. Thank you so much, James. And like I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to see some truly amazing woodworking magic, check out JLA Joinery on Facebook or Instagram. James is also in the process of spinning up a YouTube channel to document all of his awesome woodworking fun. As soon as he has that channel up, it's not up yet, but as soon as he does, I'll include a link for it down in the description. I have been hard at work working on our website and it is now live. On the website, you'll be able to find additional details to all the videos we post here on YouTube and links to products that we use. You'll also be able to find all the information regarding Athena's refit up to this point, and you'll be able to access our merch store. Funny enough, even though I am not the software developer in the relationship, I am the one building the website. It's not completely finished, and I'm still adding things daily. Now that we're on the topic of my responsibilities, besides being lead spice rack builder, I love you. I am also the head of our social media Instagram division. So if you want more behind the scenes and real time updates, follow at sailife underscore. Next week, besides bringing the boat back to Gosport, we are gonna be installing this AIS transceiver. We are gonna be varnishing the settee table here in the saloon. We're gonna be installing the barrel bolt on these new spiffy doors so we can finally stop using tape. And Ava's gonna be doing a bunch of insulating in the forward cabin. We'll end this week's video here, but we hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.